Testament Tractarian authors that fall under the Testament number two. Yeah. Well, and then I think management number five has uh, you kind of talk a little bit about dream restoration projects. So that kind of goes into buffers. But it, I mean, that also can go through the conservation plans with, for landowners, but then also it's kind of urban and rural. Yeah. So I think one thing we can do with management number five is just to take out the urban and impervious wording in the title and just say, implement and expand stormwater runoff management at full and include down there on the specific items in the table, include things for urban settings, things for non-urban yeah. settings, like the constructed wetland type project. All, all those things could fall under that heading of stormwater management in my mind, at least. Another other thing was that salt paper recently, it was really neat. I can't remember if I shared it with you. They, they quantified how much Nutrient that's supposed to be a bacterial infection, but how many nutrients can we reduce by roadside ditches? But vegetation, vegetation and roadside ditches. It's all about and the grass board. Letting the grass right. grow. Yeah. 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 I don't know if that's something you have to think about, but it seems like it'd be an easy thing to do if you can convince the county that it's not going to cause problems. Yeah. What's the part of the. Uh... So I feel like all of us in this room, uh, we, we all, you know, attend this meeting and we are all big supporters of doing all these implementations. Uh, and we talk about and kind of even joke about how simple some of these um, ideas are. But I mean, really, the, the education outreach and then financial assistance is how we get the, the best practices and the science to the people on the ground uh, to help them be receptive to it. Um, <clears throat> some of these education outreach opportunities, you know, we have the stakeholder meetings here and, and we come together for this, but some of the big, the big players, the, the shot callers, decision makers, um, they could be invited to some of these events that are listed in this, uh, that, that we talk about some things as simple as not mowing those drainage ditches or, or, you know, whatever. It, a lot of these, um, these things, uh, the classes, presentations, education things, 
provide uh, kind of like a, a conduit for us to get the science to the decision makers. Um, so I'm just going to kind of go over this laundry, laundry list of, uh, of things that are available uh, as far as education, outreach programming, and then some uh, financial, uh, potential financial funding uh, for making some of these projects happen. Um, the list, I mean, I can sit here and, and read them to you, but this is really a good list for you guys to take back and kind of consider uh, when you're you're thinking about how to present these things or like, man, we could really benefit from an urban riparian restoration, whatever that talks about, uh, you know, enhancing the riparian waterways through urban areas. Um, no mo zones is, is a big part of it. You know, if, if we can get just a 25 foot buffer off of a waterway, uh, how much benefit that provides. Um, a lot of these things that we talk about that are simple and that we're all about implementing, um, these things can provide to uh, the decision makers. So uh, encouraging them to come to any of these classes. The, this, this list is like, if you're browsing Amazon for like education things for riparian waterways or, or um, you know, increasing the health of the watershed, these are the things you could order uh, that are already in inventory. It might not be like two day delivery, but uh, we can make these things happen, either us or the entity that, that is uh, responsible for hosting these events. So. This is a really good list to take back um, and, and you know, consider what would work best for getting the information of the people in your area. Um, so these are the AgriLife education programs. Um, it deals with the things listed here, uh, watershed resource management, your livestock, cattle, and critters in general, um, the urban stormwater, and then septic systems. Um, the next one uh, covers the outreach materials. So these are materials that you could kind of request from uh, whichever entity provides it. AgriLife, we have a lot of them. <clears throat> uh, and these things can be distributed to uh, stakeholders, decision makers, um, kind of to, to educate them as to why some of these things are important. Um, again, we can have all the good ideas and all the good, even if, even if we had all the funding in the world, uh, you know, hey, we want to implement A, B, and C. Uh, it's still kind of a, a hard pitch to make to people that are just kind of like, why is that important? So through some of these materials, through some of the classes uh, that are available, hopefully we can bring some of those down here. Um, we can include these in the watershed protection plan as, as measures that we want to implement. Um, and, and really a part of presenting these measures to you uh, are to get your feedback because these are ones that we've included in projects in the past or ones that we know have been effective in some way or another in reaching people, but there are always programs that are specific to the area that we might not know about um, that we can also include in the project uh, plan so that again that kind of opens up a, a line of funding in some cases uh, to make some of these trainings happen. Here's some of the other ones <clears throat> uh, through different entities that are involved in the project. And then this is where we would ask for your feedback for you know if, if there's anything specific to this watershed uh, that any of all, any of y'all's organizations hold or can hold or can conduct or you know of, um, we would love to include them in the list so it's a little more tailored to what's going on in this watershed. Uh, if anybody has any feedback on this, you can either send it to us, let us know now, either way. Education outreach. So it might be right in line. NRA does? Yes. Yeah. Cool. Uh, okay. I can't speak for Sky, but I'll definitely check with this. Okay. Yeah, I think that's not really important. Another project called Farming Out Pollutants. It's uh, be perfect for this too. We have a lot of farmland out here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, these are important to include just so we can write them into the plan, open up lines of funding potentially. 
So. I think the, you know, what we can condition or whatever we live in the field is something we have to condition. Right. So not only, you know, directly the land we're living on, but the work that we can do. So getting the science to the people is one part of the, 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 the project here, or one, one part of the mission. But the other thing is obviously um, teaching people uh, how to implement these things or how these things might benefit them. So that's where the technical assistance portion comes in, um, which is also a part of the, the management plan or protection plan. So for each of the management measures, uh, we've kind of assigned, you know, uh, tentatively, I would say, or, or kind of written out which organization makes the most sense to provide any kind of technical assistance for the particular management measure. So what, you know, whose, whose specialty is managing, uh, you know, the, the livestock portion or the uh, lawn landscape. Um, we've kind of assigned those arbitrarily here, um, always open for change or reassignment or redesignation. Um, but this was just kind of a best effort at saying, typically these are the people that might be able to provide assistance in these areas. So if there's any feedback on this, by all means, let us let us know. We can rearrange some things, or if you want to tack on somebody, a, a different organization that would be very interested in providing technical assistance, we can add that too. And then of course, none of this would happen without money. And that's the last portion here. Um, this is not to say that uh, these management measures uh, or this project will be funded by any of these necessarily, but these are all the potential sources of funding. Um, for some of the different aspects. So this is kind of a good list for reference when you go back and say, you know, how could we possibly fund this huge, whatever it is, um, these are the people or programs that could provide that funding. So again, if anybody knows of any other sources or lines of funding that could be included in this, because you've got some partner out there with a ton of money that wants to participate in some kind of do good something in the, in the watershed, we can include them in here. Um, just provide that that feedback. Yeah, coastal management program is a good one for this area. Do you all have any idea of how any of these programs are going to benefit the people? I haven't seen any ideas yet, so I don't want to talk to the inside on that. And these are just the usual suspects. A lot of times, and especially here in the coast, there's a lot of other buckets of money that are available. I know, like the NERDA funding light. Materialized one these days. Yeah, uh, restore as well. Yeah, restore funding. So there's other options that are out there. And those are two that we can certainly add. Obviously, there are geographic limitations. Like, you know, you have to be in the coastal zone. I don't have to show you know, where that is and obviously all of those fun things. But there are additional sources. And uh, we can certainly identify those in the plan. It doesn't mean that they're going to. Open their pocketbooks and say, "Here, blank check. Y'all go do what you need to." That, that would be too ideal, but uh, they're at least identified as options uh, going forward. So, uh, but you don't just want permanent sources, even things that may expire the next two to five years. You would still have them. Yeah, we could include. Them. So I will add. Uh, the USDA uh, Water and Waste Development Program, part of their rural uh, development program. Uh, learned about it today, but they, they provide uh, funds for you know everything from the soft funds for engineering and feasibility assessments, as well as you know, construction, land acquisition, and all that for rural communities. Um, and learned about it more in the context of nutrient reduction, but um, from a you know, health and that's the yeah, USDA uh, web WDP. You know, you mentioned the uh, 
uh, infrastructure funding. I, I can't see any of these that are directly going to be, I mean, that, that I, I don't think any of us know what it's going to affect or where the funding might come into play here. But I mean, infrastructure, if you're looking at roads and bridges, um, the, the, there are smarter, smarter ways to construct and engineer overpasses um, of the creeks uh, that aren't just strictly designed to cover the, the hundred year flood. Um, it, a lot of times we hit the, the easy button on engineering those and just put it at a certain height and make the culverts a certain width apart, you know, to pass X amount of water. Um, there are better ways to engineer those that don't, um, they, they don't create all the sedimentation that often happens in front of culverts uh, that slow down the water, that drops more sediment, that clogs the culverts. Um, it, it's all part of the, I, I talk about this during urban, uh, what, what program is that? Urban stream, urban stream restoration. Yeah. Um, there are just better ways to do those things. So as water scientists, engineers, environmental, you know, people that care about that stuff, um, I think interjecting ourselves into those conversations when it comes to um, how to implement those funds, we can have a direct impact and kind of benefit from that infrastructure plan um, in, in some ways, um, particularly the, the, the roads and overpasses and, and bridges and stuff like that over our waterways. So no, not direct, directly aligned for funding this, but there is opportunity there for, for us to care about this stuff. So anyway, if there's any more feedback on these, um, shoot us, shoot us an email or, or give us a call.